We'll have breakfast a little later. <laughs> Guess we better go fishing. Thanks. Well, how's the water? Wet. <laughs> Try a little bit of both. Yeah. Personally, I uh, never drink this early in the day. And of course, I uh, never go swimming this early in the year. Drink hardy. Thanks. That is good whiskey. Well, I figure if a man's going to drink himself to perdition, he might as well enjoy himself along the way. By the way, my name's Adam Cartwright. Tom Wilson. I'm glad to meet you. Well, I've never been gladder to meet anybody in my whole life. How come I never run into you around here before? Well, I've never been around here before. As a matter of fact, I got just this far last night. What brings you out here? Girl. Hope she turns out to be worth the trip. Well, I didn't come out here to see her. I came out here to get away from her. Oh. <laughs> it's a funny thing. Sometimes fathers are more anxious for a girl to get married than a girl is. I'll get your clothes. They ought to be dry by now. Oh, I'll get them. No, sit right there. You'll have to get yourself shot in that outfit, like for an Indian or something. Yeah.
go. Shirt, pants. So the school teacher said, I don't know how many toes he's got. He never took his boots off. <laughs> together, wait before you split your seams. <laughs> <laughs> Never took his boots off. <laughs> you know, it's funny the way Pate works things out. If Adam hadn't fallen into the river, well, we wouldn't have such an entertaining guest for dinner. <laughs> well, it's certainly my pleasure meeting you and your son. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Has everybody had enough to eat? I have. It's been a wonderful dinner. Thank you. No, boy. I think I must eat too much. I feel plum stuffed. You've been stuffed for years. Don't you get smart, little brother. I'll, I'll box your ears. Well, I wouldn't do that. He has very valuable ears. Hey, let me see that. Sure, I'll... Uh, isn't it? <laughs> hey! Hey, how do you do that? Well, a good magician never explains his tricks. A magician? Is that what you do for a living? Well, that and whatever comes to hand. Well, I'll tell you something, Tom. We got a little mind that's producing about half the amount of silver you just dug out of Joe's ears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seriously, though, we could use a, a good hand. Pay's not too bad, and it keeps pretty good. How about it? Well, that's very kind of you, Mr. Cartwright, but uh, I don't think I want to be a ranch hand. Well, just as you say, but I do want you to know that our house is yours for as long as you want it. Well, thank you very much. But I'm uh, kind of anxious to see Virginia City, and uh, since it's getting kind of late, I think I'll be moving along. What? Well, won't you stay overnight? Well, thank you, but uh, no. All right. Joe, would you give us a hat and cut? Right, Pa. I want to thank you again, sir. I'm indebted to you for your hospitality. Well, we're indebted to you, Tom, for saving Adam's life. I gained from that. I made a friend. That's quite a gun. I've never seen one like it. I had it made in New York by Merwin Holbert. It's got beautiful balance. Yeah, it handles pretty well. I always say there's three things you ought to know how to handle. A gun, a gal, and a good poker hand. <laughs> good night, sir. Good luck, Tom. Boss. Tom. Joe. Come back and see us. Thank you, I will. I'll walk you out. Such a hurry to leave, Tom. Well, I'll be seeing you around. I owe you money. What? Well, uh, fifty dollars fell out of your wallet. It was all wet. I didn't think you'd want wet money. Anyway, I'll pay it back to you one of these days. You need any more? Well, if I did, I would have taken it. When are you going to be in town? A few days. Well, look me up. I'll buy you a drink. Where'll you be? You'll find me. Right. Take it easy. You know what the preacher said, honey? No, what? Uh... He said, yeah, but never do an inside straight. <laughs> I don't get it. Well, you will. Just think about it a little while. Do your mind some good. How about another $20? That's too rich for me. Want to have a look, friend? Show me. That kind of luck ain't natural. Uh, cards, please. Oh, uh, hello, Adam. You know everybody here? Uh, everybody but the lady. Oh, uh, honey, I want you to meet a good friend of mine. This is Adam Cartwright. Adam, this is... Uh, what's your name again, sweetheart? Matilda. Matilda. Morning, deal. Uh, pleasure before pleasure. Got him. Everybody get in.
Hold it. Leave the gun where it is. What are you doing, Cartwright? Back in a crooked poker player? Crooked? Yeah. You took that ace off the bottom. An ace? Right there. I guess that finishes me. Now, well, boys, don't run away. The game's just starting. Sit down, Adam. I'll buy you a drink. Uh, the best in the house for my friend here. Honey, why don't you uh, run along? Adam and I want to talk over some old times and see if you can find some new friends. Huh? Yeah, go, uh, go find some new friends. They'll be a blessing to you in your old age. Oh, well, I'll see you later, though, won't I? You sure will. All right, then. Bye. Good to see you, Adam. Thought we were going to have a little trouble there for a minute. Why? Because our friend thought uh, there was an ace on the bottom of the deck? Was there? I wonder how he knew that. Ace wouldn't have done me any good anyway. Well, that six of clubs would. Well, what do you know? The straight. The crime's right where you are. Cheating? Adam, if I wanted to deal myself a straight, I wouldn't waste my time palming a card. You're a hard one to figure. Don't even try. Hey, uh, what's a hard-working, serious fellow like you doing in town in the middle of the day? Oh, well, we have a little party out at the Ponderosa Sunday. Thought you might like to join us. Well, now you're talking my language. Just make sure there's plenty of pretty girls. Right. Bye, Tender. You cash in my chips there. So long, cheater. Like I was saying, Adam, just make sure there's plenty of pretty girls there. Sorry, little boy. Excuse me. Excuse me, boys. Boy, that smells good. It's gonna taste good, too. There's the punch, ladies. Help yourself. Just got a whiff of that beef. It smells mighty good. You stay right here and I'll get you some. Oh, those ladies over there get us some of this barbecued beef if it's all ready. Yeah. Listen, Tom, how come you ain't paying any, any attention to some of the younger girls? Well, I don't think uh, the younger girls need me. They're getting plenty of attention right now. Tom believes in spreading the fun. Why not? I like everybody to have a good time. Well, now. May I carve that for you, Mr. Cartwright? All right, Tom. Sure. Thank you. Well, Jerry, hello. Hi, Mr. Cartwright. I'm sorry we're late. Hi, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, Sue, you're looking even prettier than usual. Thank you. Your father not here? Uh, no, he's not back from his business trip to San Francisco. Oh, say, that'll be a big feather in his cap if he closes that deal he's been working on. Well, you say hello as soon as he gets back, huh? Thank you, I will. Well, have a good time, you two. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Jerry, Sue, this is Tom Wilson. Tom, Thomas is Sue and her friend Jerry. How you doing? Oh, how are you? How are you? Nice to see you. Mr. Wilson. How are you? Jerry, Sue, where you two been? You're about the last ones here. Oh, hey, little Joe. Uh, yeah, while I was uh, ironing my good pants and I burned a hole. Let him... <laughs> <laughs> so I was looking all around for these. They had a spot on them and I uh, had to take it off. And I just, <laughs> I thought we'd never get here. <laughs> yeah. Have you uh, been in Virginia City very long, Mr. Wilson? Oh, uh... Just a few days. I generally don't stay in any one spot too long. That's, uh, too bad. <laughs> of course, that uh, depends upon how pretty the girls are. Spoken like a true gentleman. Uh, you want some punch, Sue? <coughs> oh. Thank you. Well, uh, couldn't very well uh, get that pretty dress all dirty now, could we? My, you're strong. Uh, Adam, uh... See you have some of that meat ready. Why don't I take it over there? Thank you. Very 
Hey, Tom. Take on the winner of this match. Okay, just a minute. Be right back. Right. One. Here you are, ladies. Two. That's a nice piece there. Three. Want one or two? There you go. Have a little bread. Ah. Good homemade bread. All right, ladies and gentlemen, all of you gather around and want to watch this. Tom Wilson's going to take on Pete Dunn, the champion. Just took Norm. He just took Chick. Gather around and want to watch it. Ready, fellas? Yeah. On three. One, two, three. pretty good, but I bet you couldn't whip old Hoss here. I don't think anybody can whip Hoss, so I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. <laughs> You're smart. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Say, uh, like to play some horseshoes? Why, these shoes are getting heavy. Well, let me help you. We won! <laughs> Jerry, would you mind getting me some more of that punch? Yeah, sure, Sue. you come with me? There's something I'd like to talk to you about. Why, of course. Well, Tom over there sure believes in flirting with trouble. What's he up to now? Oh, just exercising his charm a little bit. Oh? Uh -huh. yeah, I have the feeling that he should be exercising his charm in something else. Like what? Think a hard day's work. Well, he seems to get along without it. See, yeah. Sue asked me to get her a glass of punch that I've been looking all over for. Have you seen her, Mr. Cartwright? No, I haven't. Well, what about you, Adam? You seen her? No, no, but uh, Mary Connor's over there just dying to have some of that punch. Come on. Look. You, uh, wanted to tell me something, Sue? Well, I thought... Oh, please... Don't, you mustn't, please. Hi, Jerry. Uh, what's the matter with you? You look like war was just declared. Now, a war just might be declared. Huh? By me on that fancy friend of your brother's, that Tom Wilson. Hey, what are you talking about? I'm talking about a skunk, him. You know what he's been doing? No. He's been seeing Sue. Huh. And you know she's my girl. And he's been seeing her every day of the week. You know what I ought to do? Now, I ought to go into that town, and I ought to drag him out into the street, and I ought to knock his head off. Is what I ought to do. Yeah, I think I'll do just that. Come on, Jerry. Now, you're no match for Tom Wilson. Oh, he's got me mad. All right, he's got you mad. You're still no match for him. Well, what am I going to do, Joe? You know how I feel about Sue. And that guy, he's just playing with her. Uh, Adam invites him out here to meet your friends, and he pulls a thing like this. I know how you feel, but come on home, forget it for a while. I'll talk to Tom Wilson. 
Look, it's partially our responsibility. It's like you said, Adam invited him out here, so let me talk to him. All right. Don't worry about it. Go on. Yeah. Where are you going? Run into town to look up your fine friend, Tom Wilson. What for? To beat his brains out. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the fine friends you pick. He repays our hospitality by stealing Jerry's girl. Oh, now, wait a minute, Joe. In the first place, I don't think he stole her away from Jerry. Meaning what? Meaning that I somehow can't think of Tom, uh, well, as they say in polite circles, as forcing his attentions on her. Oh, now, listen, And in the second place, Sue was never Jerry's to be stolen. I mean, he's not married or engaged to her. So if she's seeing Tom, I'd say it's their business, not yours. Well, I'm making it my business. You say I have a little sense of friendship, a little sense of loyalty, even if you haven't. Good luck. Sue's just an impressionable kid, and Jerry's been going with her for a long, long time. So just leave her alone. Uh, sure, Joe. Sure, anything you say is just like I've been telling you. You know, the one thing I wouldn't want to do in this whole world is cause any trouble for the brother of my old buddy. How about a drink? No, no, thanks. I think I better go. Ah, oh, come on. It's been a long, dusty ride. You owe it to your throat. Uh, I owe it to Jerry to give him the news. He's been pretty worried. All right, you give Jerry the news. I'll see Sue today and tell her she's back to being his property. All right. All right. Thanks. It's all right. Get you working, huh? Yeah, I see you're still in one piece. I was expecting to go up there with a the broom and sweep you up. Didn't you see it? Sure, son. And he said that Jerry could have Sue back with his compliments. Well, to make your buddy happy? No, no. He's sore as a boil. What? Yeah. I stopped by his place on the way home to give him the good news. Said he doesn't want her under those conditions as a, as a gift from some high and mighty benefactor. He said he wouldn't have anything to do with her now if she was the last girl in the world. He's going to go over to her place now and tell her so. Oh, like the proverbial family quarrel, little brother here almost got his nose punched in for his trouble. <laughs> Always knew you had a nose for trouble, Joe. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Pa. What's wrong? Sue Miller's father has been killed. What? And was shot down in cold blood. Well, who did it? Tom Wilson? No. Well, young Jerry came calling in soon. He heard a shot and rushed into the house. And there was Tom Wilson. The strong box was opened. And Mr. Miller was lying dead on the floor. There must be some mistake. The only mistake, I guess, was introducing that fellow to, to Sue. Oh, Mr. Cartwright! Isn't it terrible about poor Tom? Well, they're going to hang him, aren't they? Cartwright! What do you think of your fine, feathered friend now? It'll be a fine day for this town when we watch him swing. Believe me, there'll be plenty of dry eyes in the crowd. 
You can bet on that. Howdy, Adam. Can I see Tom? You sure can. You go right ahead. You think he's guilty? Well, don't you? I'd rather wait till all the evidence is in. Well, all the evidence needed is right here on this desk. Now, there's a gun that killed Mr. Miller. And here's a strong box that killed him fur. All the chambers are loaded. Now, you and I both know he had plenty of time to reload one cartridge. Robbery and open and shut case. Go ahead, if you want to see him. Hey, Adam, old buddy. Well, how are you? I'm all right. Uh, I'm uh, sorry I can't ask you in. Hey, would you uh, like a little drink? No, thanks. You're in bad trouble, you know. I've been there before. Did you shoot Miller? You really are worried about me, aren't you, old buddy? I'd like to help you if I can. Well, you sure can. How? Got a deck of cards? Would you give me a straight answer just for once? Sure. What do you want to know? Did you shoot Miller? Well, now, I think if I were to uh, try to answer a question like that, I'd be a prejudiced witness. All right. Maybe I can get some answers out of Sue. Don't. Why not? She was there, too. Leave her out of it. Please. some things about this case against Tom Wilson that don't add up. He's an intelligent man. Wouldn't try to rob your father in broad daylight in his own house with a little amount of money that was in that strong box. What do you want of me, Adam? Look, I know how hard this must be for you, but I'm just trying to get at the truth. But I told you the truth. I heard a shot, I ran in here, and I found Jerry accusing Tom of shooting my father. Why did Tom come here in the first place? To tell me. He promised little Joe not to see me anymore. Because of Jerry. And? And I told him that I didn't care about Jerry. That I loved him, Tom. And what did Tom say to that? At first he laughed. And then he kissed me. told me to go to my room that we'd talk later. And then you heard the shot and ran in here? Yes. Adam, maybe that's why Tom went to my father. To talk about us. Maybe. But only Tom can tell us, and if he doesn't, he's going to die for killing your father. Oh, Adam, take me to him. Please, I must see him. innocent. I shot my father. Oh, Miss Sue, I can't hardly... Oh, it's true. I heard Tom ask my father for permission to marry me. He refused. Offered Tom money to go away. When Tom said he wouldn't take the money... My father was so angry, he pulled out his gun. He 
called Tom terrible names. He said he was going to kill him. Tom said he wouldn't draw against an old man. My father was so angry. I knew he... I ran into the study. And then what'd you do? I grabbed my father's gun and went off by accident. Tom reloaded the gun, shoved me into the other room, just before Jerry ran in. Sheriff Tom was only trying to protect me. But I can't let him die. I guess you'd better arrest me. Why did you do it, Adam? What have you done to her? Try to take it easy, Jerry. I don't feel any better about this thing than you do. But you know her, Adam. You've known her longer than I have. Now, do you really think that Sue could have shot her own father? Now, Adam, <laughs> I'm not the smartest guy in the world. But I know, sure as I know the, the sun's going to come up, that she couldn't have done it. I know how you feel, Jerry, but that's not evidence. You're smart, Adam. You tell me what is evidence. Well, it's something that'll prove that she's lying. Lying? Of course she's lying. Jerry saying it doesn't make it true. Oh, but she is. I know she is. Look. Now, she said that Tom pushed her out of the room just before I came in, right? Right. Well, he couldn't have. There's only one door to the study. I would have seen her come out. Well, because I, I went in right after the shot. You're sure? You're sure it couldn't have been longer? Uh, no, it's just uh, like I said, Adam. Is that evidence? Yeah. Let's get over to the Miller house. Where? Well, how can we go out there then? There's nobody there. Now, if the bullet was fired from there, it uh, would have gone into this wall. What would? The bullet, the, the one that killed Mr. Miller, they never found it. Is that it? Yep. It's the bullet that killed Mr. Miller, but where did it come from? What do you mean? Well, Miller supposedly was shot with a 45, and this couldn't possibly have come out of a 45. Well, where are you going? I got Tom Wilson out of jail, so I guess it's up to me to get him back in. Adam, 
Well, what a pleasant surprise. Come on in, join the party. Adam, you remember, uh, what's your name again, honey? How many times do I have to tell you? It's Matilda. Matilda, I want to talk to you alone. Why are you always so serious, old buddy? This is serious. All right, Grandpa, anything you say. Honey, why don't you uh, run along and practice your needlepoint? Huh? No telling how many wonderful things you could make. Like what? Oh, like uh, saddle covers and ankle warmers, three-fingered gloves, uh, pencil wrappers. Why, there's no telling what you could do. Now, you go ahead and run along. Will I see you later? That is a promise. Uh, all right, then. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right, Adam, I'm all ears. I'm gonna have to take you back to jail. Now, why would you want to do that, old buddy? Murder. Now, there's a depressing thought. I found the slug. You might as well have written your name on it. I don't know what kind of a game you've been playing, but well, maybe a jury can figure it out. Oh, I think you could figure it out if you really tried, Adam. You're a bright boy. One of the brightest friends I ever had. I'm gonna miss you, Adam. I sincerely hope you miss me. Don't do it, please. You really wouldn't like shooting me, would you, Adam? No. But I will if I have to. Well, you have to do what you have to do. And I almost made it, too. So you killed him? Well, he was pretty riled up about Sue and I getting married, and I thought he was going to shoot me. So I shot him. And I went over to uh, fire his gun so I could claim self-defense. And that's when that stupid Jerry came running in. Why didn't you take the money he offered you? Chicken feet. When I could inherit it all as his son-in-law. And Sue was young enough to believe you, huh? Why not? She loves me. And I like her, too. I really do. Uh, even though she is a little young. But I could talk her into anything. Like a phony confession? Well, I convinced her that a jury would acquit a girl for killing a man, even her own father, if it was accidental. Then after things cooled off, why, we could get married. All right, now what? Well, now I guess I'm going to have to tie you up. Think that chair will be comfortable? Why not? I, uh, I suppose you'll holler. I'll have to gag you. That's right. Put your hands behind your back. So I'll hold you for an hour or so. That's about all the time I'll need. I've got a good horse. But I'll be leaving a good friend, Adam. So long. Thanks for the loan of the gun, Roy. Now, don't you mention it. I only wish that I could go myself, but the governor's coming in on the stage this afternoon, and I just got to be here to meet him. I understand. But I do believe that my deputy and the boys out there will be a, enough of a posse for you, don't you? No, I can handle myself. Yeah, I know, but... Uh... I want to be sure that he's taken officially. I told you that. Right.
Looks like we've lost the trail. Now, Jim, you scouting up ahead. I'll cover the riverbank and meet you at the forks, all right? Right there, Tom. Adam. Well, it's good to see you, old buddy. I was getting a little lonesome out here. Just throw down your gun belt, Tom. Sure. Now what? I'm going to have to take you back, Tom. <laughs> well, you don't seem very happy about it. I'm not. That's the trouble with you. You're always doing things that make you unhappy. I can only do what I think is right, Tom. That's all any man can do. Not me. No, I guess not. Not you. Why do you do things, Tom? For enjoyment. There must be more to life than that. Like what, Adam? Like being of some use. Like being of some service to somebody besides yourself. Friends? Friends. You're not a very good friend, are you, Adam? Well, I try to be your friend, too, Tom. No, I saved your life, and now you're trying to take mine. We have different ideas about friendship. You wanted to be my friend for the fun you got out of it. I was your friend because of what I could do for you. Well, you can do something for me right now. What? Just walk away. No, I can't do it, Tom. Don't ask me. This isn't easy for me. I liked you. I liked you, too. Well, I think it was right around here we had our first drink together. Let's have another one for old time's sake. <laughs> you, uh, could have killed me. Well, you did want to kill me. With sorrow, Adam, with sorrow. But dead. There is a pretty river. Beautiful. Now there come all the king's horses and all the king's men. Doing what they think is right. Come to think of it, Adam. I'd have been a lot better off. I have just left you right there in that river. have to do that. Thanks for everything, friend. He was no good, Adam. He was one of a 